these Corsairs flying for VMA 214, the Black Sheep, Pappy Boynton's own squadron. Anybody know what they're flying today? Harriers, you got it, Navy AP Harrier. Next slide. Okay, VMF 214 at the time, VMF, not VMA. Are you a 214 vet? Were you 214? Oh, no kidding. Okay, uh, at that time, they're VMF 214. What ship were they flying off of, and what's that ship's link to Puget Sound? Boy, this is some pretty deep trivia, if anyone can get this. Okay, they flew off of the USS Sicily, built in, in Tacoma, 1945. Missed the tail end of World War II, but there she is, um, all set to go. After she sailed out of Puget Sound, all armed up and ready for action. Next slide. All right, and look at this. Here's a couple of Marine pilots after completing those strikes, debriefing the skipper of the Sicily. Anybody recognize the CEO of the Sicily there? Some real aviation trivia for you, Steve. There he is. There he is in World War II, right there, debriefing his pilots. There he is as an admiral. John Thatch, the Thatch Weave, if you're familiar. And who did John Thatch teach the Thatch Weave to? Butch O'Hare and his crew in World War II. A little bit of aviation uh, history for you. So John Thatch is commanding the CVE Sicily as the Marine pilots fly off that thing on the 3rd of August, 1950 to support Marine infantry around Pusan. Okay, Pusan perimeter. There's the perimeter right there. A heavy fighting occurs along the perimeter as the north pushes, pushes south. By the end of 1950, it looked like it was gonna be a lost game right there. Excuse me, by the end of July 1950. But MacArthur's got a plan, doesn't he? And what is that? He's gonna do an amphibious assault right here in Inchon, and he's gonna cut that peninsula in half and crush those forces to the south of it. And that's where the Marines really step, step in. And note, if you fly into Seoul today, Mike, Mike, you're a great lead-in for this. And that you say is Lieutenant Lopez, is his name? Baldomero Lopez. All right, and we'll see if we run across him again. Okay, so Marine Corps units lead the assault into Incheon and the, and the assault into Seoul. And of course, that's what I call a second amphibious landing, is that assault across the Han River into Seoul. Okay, look at Incheon right there on D-Day. Let's take a look at it today. Look at that, Incheon Airport. Brand new facility built about 1999, 2000. Huge runways. Port of Incheon, city of Incheon are out here to the left where the actual invasion occurred. But you do fly into Incheon Airport. Back in the old days, you flew into Seoul Kimpo. Kimpo Airfield, if anybody flew in there. Kimpo Airfield is now a domestic airfield. The international airfield is Incheon. Okay, who was in the lead at Incheon? Of course, it was the 1st Marine Division, the Blue Diamond. Who was the CG? O.P. Smith, right on the money, and there he is. But who was really in the lead? We all know how things work. We know that generals make the plans. Ma'am, how are you? <laughs> but who's the poor son of a gun really going up that scaling ladder? Let's take a look. There he is. First Lieutenant Baldomero Lopez going up the seawall September 15th. Class of 1947. Boy, when he got commissioned, when he raised his right hand and swore in, I'll bet you he said, damn, I missed the big one, didn't I? There's nothing going on. I missed World War II. Well, what was Lieutenant Lopez's fate? There he is. Right after that photo was taken, he dived on a grenade, was killed, and won the Medal of Honor. There is his headstone, there is his photo, and look at this, Lopez returned to Korea. Isn't this ironic? Ed Doyne took this photo in Korea in the 1980s. This is a military prepositioning ship, offloading military prepositioning forces. Note the name of the ship, Lieutenant Lopez. Okay, what regiment did Polar command? First, you got it. And there is Polar in charge of the 1st Marine Regiment, cutting the birthday cake, so we know that's November 10th. Now, who's older in that photo? Me or Chesty? Any guesses? No. Chesty Polar's a year older than me. He's 52 years old when this photo was taken. So this is after Inchon and Seoul, and prior to, where's he going right after this cake is cut? He's going to get his transportation to get to, um, of course, the Chosen Reservoir, which we'll get to in just a moment. Okay, 5th Marine Regiment, Colonel Murray. Anybody work with him? Went on to become general. 7th Marines, 
Colonel Litzenberg. Next slide. And really, if you're into it, there's a who's who of the command structure there. Note uh, Colonel Davis right here. I'll return to him in a moment. Okay, push to the Albert. So successful invasion of Inchon. Lo and behold, Mike Cavanaugh led the assault across the uh, Hong River as duck, and that's taken care of. MacArthur decides to push north. He pushes, he breaks his forces in half. Half go up the left side, half go up the right side. Of course, the right side is the 10th Corps with the Marine Corps. The 10th Corps. And does anybody know what a Corps is made out of today? Or back then? Multiple divisions. Yeah, more than one division. Does the Marine Corps possess a Corps today? Eh, a little tricky. Depends how you ask it, if you get how you word it. If you count a division, an FSSG, and a wing has maneuver elements, the Marine Corps actually does possess a core, and on certain battle charts, it has the core symbol. So, in this case, it was an Army Corps made with Marine units, and it's pushing up the right flank of the Korean Peninsula, 10th Corps. Okay, well, MacArthur uh, ignored the intel, and 180,000 Chinese, of course, came streaming south at this point. And this is November, and then in December, it's 1950. And we'll get to the Chosen Reservoir, where uh, the majority of the fighting occurred right up in this area here. Okay, and of course here is the, the uh, makeup of the Chosen Reservoir. First Marine Division, 3rd Army ID, 7th Army ID, 45th British Commando, and Mike Cavanaugh. Mike, <laughs> can you stand up? Here's a panther flying off the Valley Forge. In fact, 